In this video, we're going to be talking about buying a home beats renting a home nearly every time. And make sure that you stick around towards the end of the video when we're actually going to talk about when it doesn't make any sense in order to buy that house. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb, and I'm a retired investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses, and I'm here with... Sammy Eliopoulos. I'm one of the top loan officers in the United States, and I work with Guaranteed Rate. Well, Sammy, the saying goes that either way, you're buying a house, whether you're buying that house for yourself or you're buying it for a landlord. Am I wrong here? No, you're not wrong. When you look at the numbers, it just is astounding. Take a look at this. After three years of paying $3,000 in rent, you've paid $108,000 to your landlord. In 10 years, that becomes a whopping $360,000. All right, I'm gonna play a little devil's advocate here. When I rent a house, I'm not paying for property taxes or insurance though. Oh, yes you are. It's all built into your rental payment. What makes it even worse, you can't write off the property taxes when you rent, like you can when you own. But I know I'm getting ahead of myself as we're going to talk about this very soon. Yeah, nope, we're going to. Uh, but, I mean, that's a big money. I mean, if you rent and your payment's $4,000 a month, that's $48,000 a year, nearly a half million dollars after 10 years. I, it's just crazy and that hurts. But, Sammy, talk to me a little bit about someone that means what they mean by having a built-in savings account each month. What are they meaning? Yeah, don't get me wrong. It takes time. When we first start paying your mortgage, we pay more interest than principal in the beginning. But even with the first month's mortgage payment, a portion of that payment is going towards your principal. Okay, yeah, I mean, I'm a nerd here, I admit it. So I actually look at my statement each month. Each month, I pay down now a little over $1,000 in principal. And I know that number is gonna to continue to grow up the longer I have the mortgage. But as of now, it's a built-in savings account of more than $12,000 per year. I mean, $12,000 is a lot of money. That is more than just a little something. I, I agree. I think one of the most important factors that are rarely ever talked about is the stability of owning a home and what that means. And I, I just personally couldn't agree more with you on this one. And I know everyone, they always jump to the stability of having that locked in mortgage payment. But I, I think about the aspect that no one can force you to move out of your house. And, and I can't begin, I truly can't, how many times and how many angry, disappointed tenants that I've had to work with over the years because their landlord, they've decided to sell the house. I actually had recently had one where the guy, he had been there for nearly 20 years. That's crazy. But having kids, I just think about being forced to uproot my kids and how tough that would be on them. It'd be awful. I mean, just absolutely miserable. Yeah. I, I can't agree more. But there's also that stability of knowing, like I said earlier, what, is, what your mortgage payment is each and every single month. I mean, that matters a lot. Keep in mind, Jeff, that it could change a little from year to year if your property taxes go up, or it could change a lot if you have an adjustable interest rate. But you are right on that. I mean, the people that were have the adjustable interest rates that are resetting right now that might have gotten three years ago, ouch. But right, if I have a 30-year fixed mortgage, then I can endure the stability that no one's going to kick me out of my house and no one's increasing their principal and interest payment each and every single month. Is that well, what? yeah, well, that can be so beneficial when it comes to planning for the future. Maybe it's the kids' 529s or maybe it's your retirement that you're looking to save for. Knowing your expenses is vital. All right, though, but here's my favorite. It's the tax benefits of owning a home. This one amazes me because so few people ever think about this one when buying a house. Yeah, but I think that is because it's a little bit more complicated and people can get lost in the weeds. That it truly makes a lot of sense sense. But let's see if we can uncomplicate it a little bit. Uh, but first, and I think you're going to see why in a couple seconds, I always say that April 15th is obviously tax day and April 16th really should be national go out and hug your house day. That is how much owning a house can save you in taxes. So Sammy, what is that first tax benefit? That is the mortgage benefit where you can write off the interest that you could pay on your mortgage. And that is a big one. <laughs> it's important to note that the interest you pay will start decreasing year over year on your loan. So 15 years, this one may not be as big as it was on day one. But Jeff, can you give me some hypothetical numbers? Yeah, sure. Keep in mind that these are all very hypothetical. So here we go. But let's say you have a $450,000 mortgage at 5%. That means your principal and interest payment is going to be around $24.16 per month. In year one, that means that you're going to pay $22,349 in interest. Now, let's say that you made eighty-five dollars a year. 
How the mortgage benefit works is that you can actually write off that $22,000 in interest, and essentially, that means your taxable income is now $62,651. Now, let's pretend that you're in a 25% tax bracket, then that means your new home just saved you nearly $5,600 in taxes. Now look, again, there are a lot of assumptions there, so I can't stress enough to you to talk to your accountant in regards to how much you would personally save all assumptions, talk to your accountant. That's my disclaimer. <laughs> and if you don't have an accountant, then we have a guy. He's, to your credit, he was actually <laughs> your guy first. But anyway, um, then there is the property tax exemption. So talk to me a little bit about this one, Sammy. Yes, uh, we're actually able to also write that off, um, your property taxes as well. So more tax breaks. I love tax breaks. It just it makes me feel warm inside. Again, you want to talk to your accountant about what you can write off because there are also uh, what we call SALT limits to confuse everything a little bit more. Yeah, then there's this, this big one, the mother of all tax benefits, the capital gain exemption. This one's great. Yes, this one's just so phenomenal. If you live in a house for two out of five years, then any gain up to $250,000 for an individual or $500,000 for a married couple is capital gain tax free. How does that two out of five years work? Okay, yeah, this gets confusing. It means that you have to have lived in the house for two out of the last five years. So it could be year one and year five. But what happens a lot is that they live in the house in year one and two, and then somebody's going to convert that property to an income property for two or maybe two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to sell so that way they can realize that entire gain without having to pay the capital gains tax. In this scenario, if you have that property and it's an investment property for three years in one day, then get ready to stroke a really large check to good old Uncle Sam. Speaking of gains, there's also the benefit of appreciation. It's true. The market can go up and it can go down. But when you calculate for the long term, real estate, it's just a phenomenal asset. Did you do a video comparing an investment in the year 2000 in real estate versus the stock market for the 20 year period leading up to 2020? 2020? As a matter of fact, I did. <laughs> it's great video. I mean, the long-term returns were just absolutely crazy. And that even included the period of time where housing just got crushed in 2008. I put a link up here and I'm going to put it in the description if you're interested, but I mean, it really shows you the power of real estate over the long term. All this appreciation talks make me think about the rainy day fund benefit. You know, Sammy, this is one that is often overlooked as well. Mm -hmm. I, I think about when COVID hit. I was so happy I had that home equity line on my house. I just considered it the, the second rip cord to my parachute if things got really, really, really bad. Well, hopefully that is a once in a lifetime misery, but I think the more common use of this is some maybe loses their job, uh, they can tap the equity in their home to get by while they're looking for the next one. Now, I know we said we were going to talk about when not to buy a house, but first let's ta tackle that final benefit of being able to customize your own property. Yeah, you wanna paint a wall in your house? go for it. You want to take down the wall to make that space more open, then go for that. You're able to make the house your home. You can't store nuclear waste in the property, and I always laugh at this one because your mortgage, every mortgage, very explicitly states that you can't do this. Or formaldehyde. Just as that, or there you go. I mean, very weird mortgage document. So anyway, Sammy, when should you not buy a property? That is a great question. And the answer to that is if you aren't planning on being there for the long term, as, as an example, maybe you're moving to Boston for a work assignment and the assignment may only take eh, one or two years. Well, that could be a good, good example as not to buy a house and maybe it's better to rent. And why would that be ultimately? Because your closing costs. In order to buy and sell the property, there's a good chance that if you were to sell one and a half years after buying a property, eh, your cost might be up there. And the market would not have gone up enough to recoup those closing costs. I mean, that all truly makes sense. And another reason when renting could actually make more sense than buying is if you're maybe new to an area. Maybe you want to rent for six months or a year to get a feel of the different areas of Boston and the different neighborhoods, or maybe what all the suburbs of Boston have to offer because they're very all unique. Well, uh, Sammy, I, I think we did it. I think that's why buying beats renting. Yes, if you're thinking about making the move in Massachusetts, uh, be sure to reach out to this guy. He's one of the top agents in the state and will take great care of you. I can't begin to tell you how much experience matters and finding a quality agent will make a huge difference between a good experience and a miserable one. And if you're thinking about buying a home here in Massachusetts or really anywhere in the country, then this guy, Sammy, he's the guy to help you. He works for the number two lender in the country and is one of their top 10 brokers in that company. And I got to tell you, I've worked with a lot of mortgage brokers in the past and you're not going to regret reaching out to Sammy. Now, all of our contact information, it's in the description below. So let us know if you have any questions. But ultimately, until next time.